fast forward a little bit to you. Know, I'm gonna go through your career a little bit, but let's just jump all the way to that magical 2002 Final Four one. To, to me, you and Isaiah Thomas had the, the two best two year careers. You, Isaiah <laughs> Thomas, and Jay Edwards had the two best two year careers I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, and did a lot in a short period of time by way of winning, man, averaging 14 and seven for your career. Uh, but leading, going, talk a little bit about that team that uh, eventually had that run to the Final Four. What was a turning point in the season that you can remember where you was like, you looked around, you like, all right, we got. It's, it usually talking to Isaiah, talking to these guys, it usually happens after a loss, and then yeah. you know you guys think about like, oh, we here, we we lost this game, but we special. When was that moment for you? You know what's crazy is um, we, we were kind of limping into the Big Ten season. Mm-hmm. And um, – um, oh, oh, oh. um, we were kind of limping into the Big Ten season, and we were at Northwestern. And at the time, George Leach was still starting. Mm-hmm. And he got hurt on the jump ball. It's the wildest thing I've ever seen. Like, he went up, he sprained his ankle on the jump ball. He came down on the guy's foot, and it was a bad ankle injury. Mm-hmm. And we put Odell into the starting lineup. Mm-hmm. And I think just having Odell out there and spacing the floor because he was a threat from the top of the key to shoot. And the offense, we, the early offense we ran, I would just run down to the left block. Mm-hmm. And if they front it, then they hit Odell the top of the key. Odell could knock down that um, – that free throw line, kind of 18 foot jumper right there. So they had to close out. So then I had a chance for a high, low swing the ball and we're going to different pick and rolls. I think that that was a really a turning point for us because our offense flowed a lot better and um, it opened up shooters. And then our offense was just so basic as far as I would catch the ball on the block. If a double team came swing, swing, and we had shooters. Yeah. And if double team didn't came, didn't come, it was my job to score one-on-one. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you battle, you guys, you, know, you battle. Let's talk about that epic battle with Duke, man. Um, <clears throat> what you, what, when you were preparing for that game, five NBA players on the other side. Yeah. I mean, talk about this a lot, but people don't understand. Like, that's a hell of an accomplishment to just – to kick the – to come back and beat five NBA players. What was the game plan uh, initially for that game, that battle against Duke? Um. So, what we planned on doing, we wanted to try to slow them down and transition and get back. Mm-hmm. Um, all year long, we struggled with with athletic teams. Um, yeah. it's just, we were slow. And, yeah. um, and we did a terrible job in the first half. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were beating the brakes off of us. They did whatever they wanted to do. And the sad part is, is that when that happens, you know, you're in the locker room and everybody's saying we can still come back and we can still make it a game. But th- their talent level was so much greater than ours. Mm-hmm. For the majority of us are just sitting there like, man, let's get this half over and let's just get out of here. Like, <laughs> like, like, honestly, you can say whatever you want to say, right. but as a realistic basketball player, when you're down by 18 points at one point to a, you know, a team, Jay Williams goes number two, Dunleavy goes in the mm-hmm. top five, Boozer goes um, mm-hmm. early, early second round. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris Duhon goes first round. Dante Jones goes second round. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Casey Sanders was a very functional player. Really good player, high college yeah. player. Yeah, he was, he, was a, he was a functional player. Mm-hmm. So you're not only talking about NBA players, you're talking about guys that had long careers. You know, they, they, these weren't just guys that played, that had a cup of tea in the NBA. Mm-hmm. They had long careers. Mm-hmm. We thought that, I thought that, like, you know, let's try to, let's try to make it again. Let's not get embarrassed. Like, let's yeah, right. come out and <laughs> Let's see what happens in the first five minutes mm-hmm. and it, kind of get things, you know, to some kind of level. Mm-hmm. And once we started rolling and you get momentum, it's such – and you've been through it, man. It's such a real thing in basketball. Mm-hmm. Once you get momentum going your direction, mm-hmm. it, it's it's a wild thing. Yeah. And that arena was all against Duke. Yep. You, know how, you know how they sell tickets. Yeah. So they sell four sections of the thing. Mm-hmm. So um, – we, the Pittsburgh and Kent State had the game after ours, so they were kind of trickling in. So by the second, by the by the second half, you know that that arena was full. Twenty other people erupt, and and you know four thousand of them were Duke fans, but sixteen thousand of them were Indiana fans. Yeah, or fans rooted against Duke because they just <laughs> yeah, exactly just just wanted. <laughs> so, 
So it was today. It was a rather, the loudest arena I've ever been in. Like, wow. like it was so wild, man. And everything went right, man. We made shots. We got offensive rebounds, and you know we were able to pull that out. And I mean, if you look at Coach Davis's face after we won the game, yeah. he didn't believe. Well, he, he, he didn't just, believe it. <laughs> Awesome. We need to get a steal of that photo. Yeah. Like, we put this kill off. Like, he didn't even believe we won, man. Like, he was like, <laughs> he came in the locker room. And I mean, I think after, up until that game, um, everything went right for us. When I mean, we played um, NC Wilmington, mm -hmm. and then we, um, we, no, matter of fact, no, we played Utah. And Utah, we just wasn't an athletic team, so we had them. Mm -hmm. And then U, uh, USC lost to UNC Wilmington, and that was a oh, huge – USC probably beat us, but yeah. struggled with teams like that. Yeah. And I, mean, and I knew I was going pro long before that, so I knew this was my last NCAA tournament. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I, quit, I, quit, I quit going to class like a, like two months before that. Right. Once, once, I, once I got a Big Ten Player of the Year, I was like, I'm out. <laughs> no, no question. And I I'll see you. I see. see. <laughs> it's been it's been real, baby. But I'm out of here. Like, <laughs> no matter what happens. <laughs> so like, I mean, I already had my agent picked out. I already knew that I was going to IMG Academy to train for the draft. It was all set in stone. So I was just like, whatever happens. And I think a lot of guys, even as a team, we pick up that kind of momentum. Mm -hmm. We weren't going to lose to Kent State. We weren't going to lose to Oklahoma. And once mm -hmm. we played Maryland, we truly believed we were going to beat them. That was probably the first time, you know, that we were like, all right, like, we can do this. And even though we lost, like, we did believe it, man. It was crazy.